Hey, Steve. What? Yeah, hi. Uh, we're ready to tape. You don't look prepared at all. I am totally prepared. How? Check this out. I want to blend in with this flock. How are you going to blend it? Oh, my God. Re Seriously, Steve? You look ridiculous. Are you guys ready to meet some flamingos? This is going to be awesome. How about we introduce the expert? Always about the expert with you. But Before I can't say as I, I can't say as I blame you today. We have an amazing expert today. And we're talking about our flamingos at the North Carolina Zoo. This is Keeper Stephanie. So much fun. Say hi to Keeper Stephanie, everybody. Yeah, you're supposed to say hi back. Hi. There you go. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie, we're in this amazing flock of flamingos. How many do we have? We have 17 Chilean flamingos out here today. 17? Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Hey, every day. I count every day. <laughs> <laughs> do you really? You got to come out and kind of make sure everybody's here, huh? Oh, my gosh, yes. Definitely that part so of the job. Cool. So, why flamingos? Do people, how do, what do people think about when they come in to see the flamingo habitat? Are they excited? Are they cool? Is it neat? Is it like, yeah, whatever? Well, flamingos are super popular. There's not I a agree. lot of hot pink birds out there. Nope. So they are definitely a fan favorite. I don't know if I ever told you. One of the coolest things ever happened to me, I was going into aviary once, and this little boy, he was probably seven, eight years old, came down the path behind us. Uh -huh. And as soon as he saw him, he was like, Mom, <laughs> they have flamingos. <laughs> I was like, this is the best reaction ever nice. for a bird. So these guys all, are they a breeding group or no? Well, we have had chicks from this flock before, but our flock is getting pretty up there. Oh, they're a little older they're now. A little older. Okay. So some of our guys, I think our youngest bird is 18 and our oldest ones are in their 40s. The youngest is 18. Yes. The oldest is in their 40s. 40s? How Correct. old do they get? They can live to 50. 50? 50. 50? 50. Sorry. <laughs> that surprised me. 50 years old for a bird? Like a flamingo? Correct. No way. Mm -hmm. I would have not have guessed that. 50 years old. That's amazing. And our oldest was about what you said? I'm sorry. He's in his mid-40s. He's in his mid-40s. Mm -hmm. So we still got a few years to go. He does. And they do like the flock. They, they hang out in flocks, Torpid, they typically? They do. Yes. Yeah, so a little bit unique for birds you really do have to house them in groups like this or they get so stressed out it can actually make them ill really mm -hmm. so we're really careful that if we have to do any medical care Whoa. with these which we don't have to do very often yeah. but we've got to take a couple individuals to hang out with that guy if he needs to be isolated for medical care just so he feels a little bit more comfortable and we're not adding stress to his already medical issue really mm -hmm. so they're like extroverts to the hundredth power right that's the way to say it yep <laughs> Unlike me, they're like one more of like my you. people. More like you. <laughs> and I've read they can number in flocks of thirty thousand birds. Correct. That is that's more than a population of Ashboro. Yeah, <laughs> that's that is crazy. true. That is a big flock. Yes. That's a big group of birds. And you said that, that being together is that's what they need. Yeah, really, they do. And it's uh, besides social stuff, it also helps protect them from predators. Oh, how is that? How so? Well, if you look at a flamingo, they don't really have a lot of adaptations to help fight off a nah. predator. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, their beaks are pretty blunt. They've got these long, gangly legs. They don't have any talons. So nope. what they're de depending on is having a bunch of eyes looking out for predators. Oh, cool. Okay. And then if they do see a predator hanging out in that really big group, the odds of that predator getting you are low, which is not the most, you know. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but also, if there's a big group and there's a predator and they try to evade that predator, having thousands of birds fly away all at once can be really confusing. So yeah, it'd be almost it, daunting. Yes. So it makes it very hard for a predator to single out an individual. That's cool because we, we learned a little bit about that. So it's the same idea as herding, mm -hmm. the animals living in herds. Right on the Africa savannas, like the Thompson's gazelle we met a while, long time, a long while back. Nice, yeah. That yeah, is so that. neat. I love it just kind of hanging out, standing around. I do have to say though, Stephanie, your habitat's a little bit dirty. <laughs> your habitat's a little messy, Stephanie. You know, we've seen these beautiful, pristine, wonderful, glorious yeah. habitats and yours is a little muddy. Well, I'm gonna tell you, all those exhibits you've seen where there's palm trees and lush grass, right? 
That's not where flamingos are from. Oh, really? That's not their natural habitat. No kidding. So these guys are Chilean flamingos, and they are native to the mountaintops of Chile, where they hang out in soda ponds. Mountaintops? Mountaintops, yes. They are very cold tolerant. They hang out in the snow. And on these mountaintops, there's not a lot of vegetation, and there's a lot of mud. Really? So this actually helps their foot care because they are used to living in a climate like that. The mud does. The mud does. It's like a foot spa every day. <laughs> so what these guys need, because they have webbed feet kind of like a duck, we need to help keep their feet nice right, and Right, yeah, moist. sure. So we have this nice, muddy, clay substrate to help with that. And now I know it doesn't look beautiful, but we have seen their foot health improve dramatically no since kidding. we switched over to this substrate. So how about that, guys? Remember, we do have folks answering the questions for you guys. Um, Wendy and I are there too, by the way. Don't forget, even though this one is a taped episode, we are there with you answering questions. And shout out some questions if you have any. And I would have questioned this habitat until Keeper Stephanie told us about that. That's really neat. I would have questioned the fact that there's flamingos that live where there's snow. That blows, In the my, <laughs> that blows my concept of flamingos completely out of the water. Because you do think of them as a tropical, tropical species, bird. don't you? Yeah. Good point. Yeah. That's very true. I love learning new things from our keepers. They are smart people. <laughs> We're lucky to have them, that's for sure. What do you guys think out there, our digital guests? We have smart keepers here. What? They know what they're doing, that's for sure. Remember, the zoo is open. Come see us. Watch those time tickets and everything, though. Make sure you get everything you need to do before you come out. Um, I see that amazing color. And I think that's one of the first things that people notice about the flamingos yes. is that really pretty pink. Now, ours aren't quite as pink as some other ones I've seen. Is that because they're Chilean? That is because they're Chilean. Okay. There are actually six different species of flamingos. Oh, there's six. Six different species, and each species is a different shade of pink. Oh, no kidding. Each yes, one? Yes, yes. So our Chilean guys are really more Whoa. the pale end of it. Yeah, but they are. if you open their wings, you can see the top of their wings is actually hot pink. But yeah, their you can body see that. feathers are that more pale salmon colored pink. So we'll come back to the color in a second. When you said this, kind of, I don't know why it rang a bell in my head. When they fly, because they can fly, they right? They can fly. These guys can't fit, yes. Good point, yeah. So yes. our birds cannot, but, bird, but the flingos can fly. Yes. They have the ability to fly. Yes, they're very good flyers. What, when they're in the air, what? What would you see? Was it the color or is there a different kind of thing on their belly? Is there, are their wings different? Yeah, their wings are a little bit different. So if these guys will do it and they might do it while we're out here, when they open up their wings, the top of their wing is hot pink, but all of those feathers that they use to fly, their flight feathers mm -hmm. are all black. Oh, they're black. They're, they're black. And that is true for all the flamingo species. They've got these black fight feathers. So when they're flying, you're going to see hot pink, but then this big swath of black. of black on their wings. Neat. And these guys, when they fly, kind of look pretty gangly. They're flying with their necks straight out and their legs dangling behind them. <laughs> they almost look like a spear. Yeah, right? Yeah, it's a little different. <laughs> that's kind of neat. I guess that's great blue heronish. They kind, kind of, of fly that way a they little bit? They can, but actually herons tend to tuck their heads in, okay. their necks in if they're flying long distances. If they're putting out their neck, it's to yell at somebody and be angry. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of the way. It's the way of honking the horn. Yes. Sky rage. Sky rage. <laughs> honking the horn. Well, that's kind of neat to know. I didn't know that. Yes. That they'll actually kind of curl their head back when they're in flight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but not these guys. It's so this, this color. This color. Comes from, I do know this. Mm -hmm. It comes from the food that they eat. Correct. But what do they eat? <laughs> they eat all sorts of different stuff. Oh, okay. So they will be eating seafood. They're going to eat shrimp, oh, I like mollusks, seafood. yeah, stuff like that. They also eat vegetation. Oh, I did. They are plant eaters. Mm -hmm. They will. So they will filter feed algae, and they'll also oh, cool. eat small, small aquatic plants. All right, Wendy. So this is kind of amazing that you say that. We know carnivores are meat eaters. We know herbivores our plant eaters, would you have ever considered the flamingo to be an omnivore? No. Think about that. No, like, no. It's like when you when you think of the salamander as a predator. Right. I never thought of a salamander as a predator in those exact words. Yep. So, yes, I never would have thought of a flamingo, one, living in the mountains with snow <laughs> and being an omnivore. I didn't eat, and that's funny because I just wanted to talk to you because it's something that you yeah. and I get to hear. Using and, those specific words. Yep. It's all yeah. about the science terms yeah. sometimes, and we can share them with you guys. And I had, until Stephanie said, they eat the plants. 
They eat, I didn't, yeah. I mean, I knew they ate meat. I knew they ate, eat like crustaceans and stuff, but to eat, put the plant together and then put those things together and have that omnivore yeah. diet, who knew? I love it. That's so cool. Sorry about that, Stephanie. We got to <laughs> ignore you for a second, but every <laughs> once in a while when Wendy and I, it's like, wait a minute. We have That's, those like aha moments. It I is. Love it. I love it. It is. It's really cool. So in the food that they're eating, mm -hmm. the color's coming from that, obviously. Yes. What? Do you know what's in the food that's giving them the color? Yes, it's something called beta carotene. Beta carotene? Beta carotene. Isn't that in carrots? Yeah, I was gonna say, I think of carrots. It's in a lot of different stuff. Oh, I, is it really? It is, I know people generally think when they see flamingos, oh, they only get their color from the shrimp they eat. Yeah. Beta carotene is in a bunch of different stuff, including oh. blue-green algae, which is something else the flamingos eat. Oh. So the beta carotene, mm -hmm. here's another fancy science word for you guys, I did read this one carotenoids <laughs> i love it science word carotenoids so that beta carotene we do know it's in carrots mm -hmm. it's in the shrimp it's in the algae mm -hmm. it's in the other things that they're eating correct why don't we turn pink <laughs> well we don't have feathers that absorb beta or the carot the word i can't say the carotenoids the carotenoids <laughs> you're welcome hey, hey. hey go team work. go team right exactly um, we don't have feathers that let carotenoids settle into them to make them that color. Okay. We process it a different way than flamingos. Gotcha. And I bet since it's not, since carrots aren't all we eat. Correct. <laughs> we're eating all kinds of stuff. That's probably another thing that kind of plays into it. If all they're eating are those, are those foods that contain that beta carotene, I'm sure it does because it's what kind of get filters out to the feathers and things mm -hmm. like that. Don't try to eat so many carrots that you turn orange. <laughs> Don't do that. Zoo tip, zoo tip for the day. <laughs> keep that, keep that diet varied. Um, Keeper Stephanie, you said you were going to provide them some enrichment. I am. You guys remember enrichment? Camera person. Yes. Do you remember enrichment, the term? Yes. <laughs> Winnie showing aware. you guys all the amazing birds. <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted, they're so pretty. <laughs> enrichment, what does it mean? What does enrichment mean for the animals here at the North Carolina Zoo? What is Keeper Stephanie going to provide for the, for the animals here? Something to challenge the animals, to get them to do something, they, or something a behavior similar to what they might be doing in the wild. Can we watch that? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Is that what this is right here? That is what it is. Oh, it's behind us? Yeah. Uh-oh. If you guys, if you had smell-o-vision right now, guys, you know, we've heard, we've kind of talked about that before. This stuff is, uh, it's pretty smelly. So it looks like, what's what's the meat? Well, the meat is krill. Oh, it's krill, it's okay. Krill. Yes. So the main food that we feed the flamingos is a pellet that is, is complete. It has everything they need in it. Okay. But we do feed them some novel food items just to kind of make their day a little bit more exciting. So krill is one of the enrichment things we'll give them. Okay. And the other thing we're going to give them today is finely chopped kale. Oh, you li you don't like your flamingos? Is that how, why you're giving how them? How is kale enriching? <laughs> right? Like seriously, kale is not enriching to me. That would not be a it's, good thing. No. Well, you know, flamingos, I guess, have more refined pellets than I do. I don't know. Ouch! Keep her <laughs> Stephanie! Yeah, Keep I Keep her don't, Stephanie I digging. I do not find kale. I'm sure there are some digital guests uh, arguing with me right now <laughs> that love kale, no. but there's nothing about kale I find enriching. No. I have a strange feeling that by now they have an idea what you and I do like. Yeah, I mean, we talk about it all the time. We do talk about We talk about food a lot. Yeah. And pizza is high on my list. I know some of some of our digital guests are big fans of pizza. Yeah. We see ice cream and chocolate a lot. Mm, that's good. Yeah. So. That's better than kale. Yeah. I'm not lie. Right? Thank you, Keeper Stephanie. Now, see? if you put kale in my ice cream, I've had spinach ice cream. It's actually really good. On purpose? Yes. It's actually really good. Mm. Because it tastes like vanilla ice cream that just happens to be green. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Keeper Stephanie, what what's, can, what's can... the black? What's the black? That is spirulina, which is a blue-green algae. Oh. oh, really? Yeah, so we put a tablespoon of that into their pellet, and that is to help with their pink color. Uh, that stuff is a really fine powder. It is super sticky. <laughs> and you'll see when I set up their food pan, it's actually going to turn all the water in their food pan green. Really? Mm -hmm. Green, not red? Not red, green. Green. And we add that because we, that doesn't grow here. 
naturally, right? Yeah. Yeah, and it's something that is added to their palette, but it's like an extra boost of something to help them keep their nice Sure. Color. Yeah. Gotcha. Neat. I have to admit that there was one time I went somewhere and I thought, because the flamingos were inside, mm -hmm. I was like, I bet there's a pink light on them. There's got to be a pink light on them. Pink light. They were so bright. They were so yeah. pink. They were so yeah. vibrant. Yeah. So that's actually a, a keeper cheat for us to make sure our flamingos are eating properly. If flamingos are not eating the appropriate diet, they can actually lose their pink color. I love that. They have a keeper cheat. <laughs> yes. Yeah. There's a keeper cheat. Yeah, so it's not instantaneous. It would take a really long time, and they'd have to grow in new feathers where they were eating a diet that wasn't appropriate, but they can actually wash out and turn like a pale, like white pink, no or kidding. white gray color. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like my hair. <laughs> you, need, you need more. You're not getting, getting enough. Tea. I'm, not, not, I'm, not getting enough <laughs> I'm not getting enough something. I guess, because people who do color their hair, I guess same idea, right? If you didn't have the pink, it would kind of be change it like that? Well, I mean, it means they're not getting something nutritionally. So that is a, a tell that something's not right. Yeah. Okay. But not eating the appropriate diet can lead to a bunch of other problems too. So it's gotcha. not recommended. Yeah. Don't do that to your flamingos. Uh, it just is a sign that something's out of whack. Something's up. Um, okay. Something's out of whack. It's not quite the same. Cool. So we're going to watch them get their snacks. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. All right. So what's the plan, Stephanie? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up their diet pan and flood it with water, and then I'm going to put the chopped kale in the pool. And then we're actually going to hop out of here so they're a little bit more comfortable to come Absolutely. Eat, so we're not intimidating them away from Well, I, it was so nice to be in here with them. Let me say goodbye. Thanks, guys. Let me join you for your, let me be part of your flock. We got a couple more things to talk about with these guys. That's amazing birds, that's for sure. And they're tall. All right, we'll talk about other stuff, Keeper Stephanie. You've got something you want to do. I'll step out, you do your thing, and we'll go from there. All right, sounds good. Thank you. Ready? Yep. All right. I might just talk a little bit over top of you. Just going over. Keeper Stephanie's going to put some we're gonna, food we're out. I'm going to watch her do keeper things. Watch her do keeper things. Well said. Oh, the wow. There. Nice shot. Yay. That's so pretty. There goes the pellets. Remember the spirulina? Spirulina? Spirulina is in there. Yeah. She poured that in there with the krill. With the krill. Yeah. Whales eat krill. Good job. Like millions of them at once. Yeah, not quite. Just not, not a little, not a, a bit of a bucket. Oh, somebody's like, oh, no, the water. I don't like water. Oh, wait, I'm running in water. black is so pretty it is pretty feathers. and she says it's going to turn the water green i can see it happening. you can yeah I'll zoom in for our, our what do you guys think about these flamingos huh how cool are they and there's so much that goes on that you don't think about the neat colors the extra diet and the keeper cheat how fun was that they have a keeper cheat to make sure everybody stays nice and healthy. And here's the here's the kale that Stephanie claims is enriching. Let's see what happens. Oh, they're like waiting. They're like they're oh, waiting for you to get out now, Stephanie. <laughs> so what would they go for a fort? Let's put you on the spot. What are they going to go for first? Well, probably the kale because it's closer. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to be entirely This honest. is my spirit animal. <laughs> what food is closer to me? I love it. A little cautious. Checking things out. That pool's a lot deeper than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, that pool is about four feet deep at its deepest part. Oh, four feet. Wow. Mm -hmm. Do we have boys and girls? We do. We have males and females. They're yeah. just a little older. They are a little so they bit They can't breathe. So, fun fact about flamingos, you cannot tell boys and girls apart just by looking at them. Oh. You actually have to do a DNA test to tell DNA? them. DNA? Yes. Wow. wow. Which sounds complicated, but all that means is that we pull a couple of feathers, send it to a lab, and they test it to tell if it's a boy or a girl. Okay. Mm -hmm. Watch this feeding behavior, guys. We'll talk about this in a second. Let's watch what they have to do to eat. Watch how their head is manipulated. Watch what they do with their head to take a bite of food. A little bit. Are they a little bit kind of like, what are you guys still doing here? Mm -hmm. Don't watch me eat. That's rude. 
So you can't, I could, I, can you tell who's who out there as far as boy and girl? Um, by their leg bands. By their leg bands. <laughs> <laughs> That's legitimate. That's yes, legal. It is, yeah. So every bird out here has got a colored leg band uh, and it's got a number on it. Oh, it has a number too. Okay. And it's the easiest way for us to tell them apart. There are a couple birds out here who I know exactly who they are just by looking at them, but right. it's pretty hard to tell some of these guys apart. I, they do. They all, they all look very, very they similar. Do. That's for sure. Stephanie, they're not real keen on the kale either. No, you're, they're making a liar out of me. <laughs> My guess is it's because Wendy and I and, and you are still here. Honestly, if she backs up a little bit, they might come down. Okay. Hey, Wendy, did you hear that? Could you back up just a little bit? Yeah. Trying Wendy's trying to show you guys some really good pictures. She's actually on the very <laughs> corner of the habitat, but we'll see if she can get her out a little bit. So what's interesting about flamingos that we don't often think about is that we are technically predators for flamingos. We are. We are, yes. So in the wild I've never eaten Chile, flamingo. I have not either, but some people in South America do because it is a food source. So these oh, okay. guys are looking out for us because we are a big scary predator. They are, we, I guess we are. Yes. And we are big. Mm -hmm. So people don't often think about it, but that's actually really why we have a railing up is because it makes these guys feel a little bit more comfortable if we're okay. a little bit farther away from them. Okay. Is there, just because we saw it, is there a, is there a hierarchy in the, in the flamingo world? Well, these guys have best friends. They actually do pair off during the breeding season. So you, if you watch, you'll see some of these birds are hanging out with one specific other bird that's like okay. their bestie. And then, yeah, there's a little bit of competition as far as who gets to eat first. It's changing constantly, but yes. Neat. There's that feeding behavior. It's really cool. Watch what they do with their beak. They turn their head upside down a little bit. Hey, Wendy, check this out. I'll come over here with you. Come on over here, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. So this is a replica skull. That's not a real one, it's a replica skull. It's kind of neat. Wendy, can you hold that for a sec? Wendy's gotta do double duty here all of a sudden. She's gotta do the microphone and the camera. So there's that, there's that beak. So to eat the food, they can't just kind of grab it. They can't come over and just grab something no. off of Stephanie. So what they'll do is they turn their head to filter out the food. They eat like that. And they, you've got these really cool ridges. How good is that camera, Wendy? Can they see those? Oh, yeah. Their beak is designed to help them filter out those foods that Keeper Stephanie was telling us about. And you saw these guys do it. They kind of tilt their head up a little bit, so now they can feed. So they can't feed with a beak up like this. They've actually got to turn their head to eat. And they're filtering out the kale or whatever else is in there they're trying to get a, get a bite out of. I think it's so neat. So what's really wild is their tongues actually have bumps on the side that fit into the grooves of the... Oh, leg. really? Yes, they've got like horny bumpy tongues which i wish i could show you but i don't have a picture of it it is like the first time you ever see it it's kind of like what is wrong but that is just how their tongues are neat guys look that up I'm flamingo going to. tongue i'm not gonna lie i'm gonna google that today look up flamingo tongue mm -hmm. i've had to google some really strange things in my career and that's gonna be on the list nice they're getting a little more comfortable it looks like When they, so we talk about the mud and things like that, it's better for their feet. Yeah. I know when they build their nests, they kind of build nests almost like a cone. Yes, it's like a pillar, yeah. Okay, good deal. I like, to say, like That's a good way to say it. And then when the babies hatch, yes. they kind of hang out together. They do, yeah. Flamingos have a really different strategy during the nesting season. So when these guys start nest building, the flamingo flock as a collective will start nest building all at the same time. Yeah, they all go together. Mm -hmm. And then they'll lay their eggs usually within a week of one another. So they're sitting on their eggs all at the same time. And then mm -hmm. when they hatch their chicks out, they hatch out at all roughly the same time. So, digital friends, why? Why lay all of your eggs in a flock at the same time? 
why have all of your babies being hatched around the same time? What's the advantage? We'd learned about this a little bit with thick-billed murres and some of the other seabirds, that they all kind of come together and produce offspring at the same time. Thompson's gazelles do a similar type of behavior, even though they're mammals, same idea. Let's give, oh, let's put, provide a lot of babies at once. Keeper Stephanie, what's the advantage of that? Well, flamingos do a really unique thing where once the chicks get a little bit older, yep. they will actually group all of those chicks together in a nursery and have one or two babysitters hang out with the kids while the rest of the adults can go and feed. What an amazing strategy. So that's called a crush, and that is really unique. There's not a lot of bird species that do that. A crush. A crush. And having all those babies at once, there's just, and if they're all in the same place, mm -hmm. the chances of one individual surviving, again, go up. Just like being in a flock, like you mentioned earlier. Just like, just like being, when you're hanging out together, the chance of that one individual being picked out is very, very low when you're all together in that crush. I think that, because they do ask sometimes, it's C-R-E-C-H-E. -E. I'm a terrible speller, but yes. I'm pretty sure that's right. C-R-E-C-H-E, <laughs> -E, a crush. The only other animal I know that does a crush are penguins? I, yes, I think so. Do penguins do that? I think so. Every once in a while I learn something, guys. Every once in a while. How tall are these birds, Stephanie? Well, they come up to... The tallest one we have. About your neck? Yeah, about my neck. So they're roughly like three and a half, four feet tall. Uh, yes. Yeah. So come up to Stephanie's neck. So about here. So three and a half, four feet tall. Yeah, and that's our tallest individual. We also have some little shorty short ones here down to like here. So. <laughs> Gotta love shorty shorts sometimes. Yeah. yeah, that's okay. Yeah. So I know it doesn't really look at like it when you're looking at this flock as a whole, but we do have some really tall individuals and some really short individuals in there. I see. And three and a half, four feet tall. Mm -hmm. Unfair question, maybe you don't know. What what about do these guys weigh? Because uh, they, they look weigh? they don't look they, <laughs> two kilograms? Two Which kilograms, so two times two point four for eight about five, eight, five, six, seven pounds? Yeah, and then and that's on the heavy end, honestly. Okay. So like four to five pounds. Okay. Which, uh, so these guys look humongous, but there's not a whole lot there. <laughs> not a whole lot. To, yeah. Well, there's not much to the legs, that's no, for sure. really not. And then even their bodies look huge, but it's mostly feather. Oh, is it really? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of feather there. So the body is just kind of tiny. Yeah. So holding them is not, it's not hard because they're heavy. It's hard because they're awkward. And I imagine <laughs> having those legs going all the time. Yes. There's a lot of leg, a lot of neck. Uh, and we have to be really careful when we're handling them that we don't hurt either one of those things. Oh, that makes sense. Got to be a little more gentle. Yeah. I have to admit that there's something wrong with their legs. No. Yes, there no, is, Stephanie. They, the legs, legs are bending. I think I'm right this time, Stephanie. No, no. Bird legs are exactly how they should be they're bending wrong look at the knee why, hold on a second why do they do that wait 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 wait. keeper friends or digital friends am i right look at the legs look at the the knee is bending backwards the knee is bending the wrong way and she's telling me that's normal it's normal for birds steve i mean maybe not for you and i you think? i haven't even mastered walking with my knees bending forward <laughs> so i can't imagine them being bending backwards but, but that's a the birds, knee that's it no it's that's the knee and it's bending the wrong way all right keep your stephanie you say that i'm wrong prove it well let me let me tell you something fun so okay. if we have our legs sticking out okay and we we bend our leg right. we've got two places to bend right the ankle look at this wendy can you look at this for a second Ste keep your stephanie you're gonna try to prove gonna, well, gonna try to prove to that i'm wrong yes. so we've got two joints in our leg right we've yep. got we've got the ankle, ankle. which bends like this yep. and the knee that bends like this right and look there's their yeah. knee is bending the wrong way no it's not so yes it is so they've got two joints as well okay so if we're looking at that pink ball in the middle of their leg. Right, the, the knee. <laughs> the pink ball in the middle of the leg, which right. way is that bending? Backwards. Not backwards. So it's bending, if you're looking at how it's bending, stick your leg out, yep. which joint bends that way? All right guys, everybody digital world, stick your leg oh. out. Oh! What, Wendy? Your ankle. No, that's the ankle? The ankle. So their knee is their ankle? No, their ankle is their ankle. <laughs> and they're walking on their tippy toes. Correct. So these guys are walking on their tippy toes. And their ankle is what I think is their knee. Right. It's their ankle. So the knee yeah. is up in kind of inside the body. I'm not that's what you can't see the knee very well. Right. You can't see it very well. It's underneath their feathers. So underneath they have a knee, all those feathers. But it's way up high and you can't see it, but when we have them in hand you can feel it. What? So 
So can you show them that, wow. Wendy? Are you are you that good on that camera? Oh, I, I'm showing them bent ankle. So that right now. ankle bending, yes. that 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 joint we see halfway up the leg is their ankle. So from the from that joint down is their foot. Correct. Great. So and they've got webs. Toes. toes. Webs, toes. They're standing on their toes. Tippy toes. Standing on their tippy toes. So they don't walk on their foot. They walk on their toes. Yes. It helps to look at a picture for sure. So you can see that they wow. have a lot of the same bones that we do. It's just the proportions are different. Wow. I'm not even pretending to not know that because sometimes we pretend things that we don't know. <laughs> I'm not pretending that I didn't know that because I legitimately didn't know that. I mean, it's... I didn't. It's, it's awesome thing. to learn. It's, like, it's not a thing we often think about. We just assume that it's bending the wrong way. As everybody does. Yeah. And digital guests, what did you did you think that bent the wrong way? Let's take a. I'm going to give. I'm going to give you a few seconds on this one. Did you think be that honest. the flamingos? I was just right. Got to be honest. Did you think the flamingo's leg bent the wrong way? Come on now. And it's it's, it's the same with the ostrich then, because mm -hmm. we've seen ostrich same thing. Small birds? Yeah, a lot of those Robins, birds, cardinals? Yeah. All those really? little songbirds. So did you guys know that? Did you guys think the leg bent the wrong way? I did. That's crazy. Look at that big old long neck. Can they swim? They can swim. They can swim like a little paddle duck. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> That's Our pool cool. is not quite big enough or deep enough for them to do that, but they can. That's neat. What are their uh, what are their biggest predators in the wild? In the wild? Well, they don't have a whole lot of predators, but in South America, uh, they've got to look out for things like other eagles. They've got to look out for big cats and then people. And people too? And people too. That's crazy. So we're talking about humans as predators and that these guys do build those really neat nests. Mm -hmm. Some really cool stuff. Um, What's about the gestation period of these guys? Well, these guys lay an egg. They have Excuse to sit me. on it for about 28 days before. 28 it's days? Yeah, it's a pretty long incubation period. That is long. It's not quite um, rhinoceros long. No. Or elephant long. No, and it's also <laughs> not super short. Like some of the other birds I work with, incubation is 14 days. 14 days? Yeah, so that's really quick. So this is somewhere in what the What do you middle. have there? So this is a flamingo egg. So this is what they look like. This is a real egg from a couple years ago. Okay. It was infertile. It just means there was not a chicken side. So we've actually oh. emptied it uh, and we preserved it so we can show it to guests just so they see what a flamingo egg what looks like. That's yeah. really big. It is pretty big. It seems really big, but not compared to the size of the flamingo. So well, this, how, many, how, many, how many of these will you lay? One. One at a time. One egg yes. at a time. Yes. So this is a lot of work for a pair of flamingos in my hand right here. Is it really? Yeah. So these guys, when they nest, will build a mud column that's about a foot and a half, two feet tall. Oh, wow. And then they'll smash down the top to make a little dish. Ah. And then they'll lay one egg on top of wow. it. Wow. And then mom and dad will actually take turns incubating the egg. They are really fair in this. Good it's parents. It's a 50-50 job. Are they monogamous? They kind of hang out together? They are. For the most part, okay. as long as they're successful, they'll keep. Together oh, together. good deal. That's interesting. Yeah. I wouldn't have thought about that. That's yeah. cool. So if they if they have a couple nesting events where they don't make any chicks, then they'll kind of switch it up and try nice. to figure out how to make This isn't work. This relationship's not yeah, working. This is right not now. the right way. We're so. not making babies right now. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> so what's really neat about this is when they hatch out the chick, it's it's really small. It fits about into the palm of your hands, and they grow very quickly. And it's pink. No, it's not pink. It's not pink. It's not pink. So we talked about... They get the color from the food that they eat. Right, and <sighs> Chick has not had a chance to get that sure. food yet. Sure, yeah. So another really unique thing about flamingos is they feed their babies something called crop milk. Crop milk? Crop milk. Not, they don't feed them what you... No. Really? No. Not, and not the milk that we think of as mammal milk. No, it's different. Yeah, because they different. don't have those parts. No. So Crop milk. Yes. So instead of catching stuff and then trying to feed it to the chickens, we saw how weird their bills are. Yeah. They actually have glands on the inside of their throat called crop milk glands, and it makes this special substance called crop milk. I'm going to take this off just for a second so you guys can hear that. It's crop milk. Isn't that crazy? Crop milk. And there's these glands, these crop glands in the throat. That's so neat. And both mom and dad have these glands. 
So both mom, a mom and dad. Mom and dad, so they can both feed. Oh, the that's cool. Mm -hmm. I did not know that that mom and dad mm -hmm. had the glands. Yes. Neat. And so this substance is actually bright red. And it can be really confusing the first time you see it, especially if parents aren't real good at getting it into the chick the first time. <laughs> oh. It can look real messy and a little scary. It can look like, yeah, it like, look like blood. blood. Yes. Oh, but yeah. That's not what it is. Really? It's just slappy feeding from mom and dad. I'm going to Google that too. No <laughs> kidding. Crop milk bright red. Mm -hmm. That's neat. Um, speaking of babies, one of our keepers, Keeper Jeff, there was an there was an there was an incident that happened in South Africa. It was in South Africa. Can you tell our guys a little bit about what happened? Yeah, we had a really unique opportunity to help out some wild flamingos in South Africa. So a couple of years ago, uh, there is a giant flock of flamingos in Africa that were nesting on a man-made lake. Okay. And unfortunately, the water in that lake dropped dramatically. So what the flamingo parents did, they had some chicks, is they started abandoning their chicks. Because that's what they would do, right? Yes, it okay, sounds really five. awful, but you've got to help protect yourself so you can make more babies for the future. Sure, that makes sense. So what a bunch of zoos did internationally is they all came together, collected these abandoned flamingo chicks, and hand-reared them wow. until they got big enough that we could re-release them back into South Africa. No kidding. And the North Carolina Zoo was part of that. We were, yes. Keeper we were Jeff. able to send Keeper Jeff out there, and he was able to help out with that and hand rear flamingos for a week or two uh, to help with that giant effort of hand rearing thousands of flamingos to put back into the wild. Wow, there you go, guys. So the North Carolina Zoo, always caring, either here at the zoo, uh, internationally, wherever it can be. And it's neat that Keeper Jeff was able to do that. And that we were able to have a hand in, in yeah. saving those flamingos from that, at least from that one lake yeah. in that yeah. moment where that, where that accident happened. Yeah, it's really awesome to be able to get this knowledge about how to take care of birds in, in a setting like we have here at the zoo and then yeah. apply that to conservation out in the real world. That is so, so cool. Good deal. Was there anything else you think that our guests should know about flamingos? I have one more thing I want to share with them. I'm going to have them do something. But do you have anything else you want to share with us about flamingos? This has been really fun. Yeah, I mean, I hope you guys appreciate that they are, besides being really cool because they're hot pink, there's a lot of other stuff about flamingos that is just so unique and so There is. Them, so. And the feeding behavior, the way the, the, way the leg bends, you yeah. showed us how that really works. And then, like you, like you said earlier, Wendy, the black yeah. under the wings. Is there any so in there that have, like, certain personality traits that, 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 like, really stand out to you? They all have very unique personalities. Uh, we don't often get to talk about that, but yes, we we definitely know them as individuals. Uh, one of our oldest birds out there is number 40, which we're lame, we name them by their numbers. Well, you know, hey. Uh, but he's a very spunky older guy, and we know him pretty well. So he's spunky. He's spunky, yes. Um, like I said, he's kind of an older guy. When we go out there, he's usually the first one to approach us for food. So he's, you know, <laughs> a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more motivated than some of our other uh, individuals might be. That's neat. And each one of them has a little bit of a different personality. Yeah. All kind of relaxing right now a little bit. Good I know, deal. I know uh, just by meeting and no getting to know some of our digital guests and looking at these guys right now, what's, what's with the one leg? What's with the one leg? I'm going to show you. All right. You guys have to do it too. Yes, all of you. Okay. I'm going to do it too. Stand on one leg. For us, it's a little bit wobbly. Two is a good solid base for us. I'm Keep your legs shoulder film. apart. I'm trying to film. Don't, don't, don't. Ah. Wendy, st oh, okay. two feet, Wendy. I'm okay. Okay, got it. Now two. Okay, she's on two now. She's good. You can see the camera. But when I'm on one, I'm a little bit unsteady, right? How about you guys? When you're on one, are you a little unsteady? It's not perfect for me. Through a lot of research, that's one of the things scientists have determined. The way their legs are built, being on one leg, is actually very sturdy for the flamingo. It's actually more sturdy than being on two. Isn't that crazy? Okay, put your, put your foot down. I'm sorry, I should have told you that earlier. Put your foot down. <laughs> so one leg is more sturdy for the flamingos. Remember their toes are webbed? Their feet are their little toes, not the feet. The toes are webbed. So it gives them a little more of a platform. And then while they're on that one leg, it's more sturdy. It's also thought that it might help with temperature. 
so they can kind of change feet to mount to kind of help with keep their temperature where it needs to be. There are some theories that maybe it's about getting out of the water for the, where the parasites are or where maybe it's too alkaline, maybe it's too basic. So changing that up. But the, the few actual studies that's been done has shown that it's actually the way the leg is put together and in the hip, it's more sturdy to be on one. The other reason I think that is that the babies will do the two. So they haven't learned that yet. They just know this is easy. Being on one foot's easier than being on two. So even the young stand on one foot. How cool is that? Or the best reason is that when they're on one leg, if they uh, lift the other one, they fall down. Yes, I did. I you went there. Didn't. I did. I decided, you know what? It's time to share a joke with our digital guests. All right, guys, this is Wendy's going to kind of play us out on those beautiful animals, the Chilean flamingos from the mountains of Chile. The mud habitat's a wonderful habitat for them. Turning the head upside down to eat invertebrates and plants like algae and those carotenoids, that beta carotene within, give them that really, really pretty color. The Chilean flamingos. Thank you guys so very much. We hope to see you again on Mondays and Wednesdays for Zoo Adventures. The zoo is open. Check out for time tickets. Make sure you make your reservations online to get here. Face, face coverings are recommended. When you're in groups, they're required. So when you're in a group at the zoo, Having a face covering is required. <coughs> Excuse me. Stay safe. I think I have a Saharan dust. We are just here at the Saharan, right after the Saharan <laughs> dust. That's when we're taping. So I think it's getting to me. Stay safe. We hope to see you again soon. From Wendy and Steve, bye-bye.